With the growing popularity of fast printers from brands like Creality, Bamboo Labs, and Anchor Make, it was only a matter of time before we saw Anycubic step up to the plate and try their hand at fast printing. This is the Anycubic Cobra 2, and it costs just 279 US dollars. They advertise its max printing speed to be 250 millimeters per second, and it has the same build volume as an Ender 3. It uses aluminum extrusion with inlaid steel rods that these steel wheels ride on. This is great for both rigidity and durability compared to traditional V-slot wheels. Another benefit of these wheels is that you can tighten them without creating flat spots like these traditional V-slot wheels often get. The print head assembly has been completely revamped. The shroud houses a direct drive extruder, a bed leveling probe, a volcano style hot end, and a large part cooling blower fan, which is crucial to solidifying print layers quickly so the next layer has something solid to adhere to. On the back of the print bed is two new additions, a silicone nozzle wiping block and a little metal button. They're calling this button the Levy Q 2.0 and it's a sensor that completes a circuit to determine the location of the nozzle tip compared to the bed probe. This works the same way that a CNC tool probe works, touching a plate to complete a circuit to determine the length of the tool. There's still a Z offset and that comes preset from the factory. If you disassemble the tool head and change the height of the probe, they include this tool to reset the gap between the probe and the tip of the nozzle. Of course, there's mesh bed leveling, silent stepper drivers, a touch screen, removable PEI coated bed, filament runout sensor, and power loss detection. All the things you'd expect from a printer being released in 2023. There's also dual axis lead screws, but not the way you'd think. Instead of two Z axis steppers, they link the lead screws with a belt at the top. I'm a little skeptical of this, but it moves both lead screws easily by hand, so we'll see how it holds up during printing. My slicer of choice for fast printing is Prusa Slicer, due to its maximum volumetric flow rate settings. Luckily for me, on the SD card, they include a profile for Prusa Slicer that can be easily imported. When importing the profile, there was a command in the G-code post-processing section of the settings that I didn't recognize, called arcwelder.exe. So I did some digging and I came across the GitHub page for this script. It's by a user named Former Lurker, who you may know as the person behind Octolabs. The function of this script is to convert G0 and G1 G-code commands to G2 and G3 ARC commands and back again. This can greatly compress most G-code files and potentially improve quality. I want to do some prints before I change any settings in this profile, testing the machine as it comes out of the box. So let's first try the prints on the SD card. There's a Benchy and a Flexirex. I found a G-code analyzing tool online where you can upload your G-code and get some info on speeds, settings, and print times. Let's look at the 30 minute Benchy provided on the SD card. We can see here the max speed is as advertised, 150 millimeters per second. But when we look at the speed histogram, the majority of the print speeds are 40, 80, and 99 millimeters per second. This is a great visualization of what speeds we can expect to see while printing. For these initial prints, I'll use white ESUN PLA+. print quality is really good, considering the 30 minute print time. I did notice only one perimeter was used, probably to save time. There's a little deformation up on the front of the boat, but that large cooling fan was able to keep up. Next, I printed the Wild Rose Builds test cube.
This took one hour and 20 minutes of print time at a layer height of 0.2 millimeters. It's hard to see with white PLA, but there's a fair amount of ringing around the corner here. But otherwise, the print quality is exceptional for a machine at this price point. It even managed to pull off some of the hard to print areas like these small diamond shapes. There's a fair amount of over extrusion, but that's an easy fix. Finally, the flexi Rex on the SD card. Using a brim on this model is really not the move here. The model still articulates, but removing the brim from in between the parts here is going to be a lot of work. It'll probably end up having a sharp edge, as you can't get a deburr tool in here. Aside from the aforementioned over extrusion, the print quality here is good. Next I wanted to print this torture trophy using the stock settings. I'm also going to switch to blue PLA for this. This printed great. The small features have great detail and the parts unscrewed and assembled with ease. There's a small amount of wispy stringing, but I think that's due to the white feature they've enabled on this provided profile. With a print time of 2 hours and 44 minutes, it's hard to complain about this quality. Next, I jumped into Prusa Slicer and made a handful of changes. Most importantly, I enabled max volumetric flow rate and set my print speeds to max so the slicer will generate the highest possible speed. I slice up this twist container and after analyzing the G-code, you can see the print speeds are much more diverse. With a max printing speed of 280, which is on par for what Anycubic claims this machine can reach. Let's print this thing and see how the printer performs. Again, we have some wispy stringing which is easily taken care of with a heat gun. But the part is fully functional and the planetary gears on the base of this container spin as they should. There's a fair amount of noise on the outer perimeter from vibrations, but again totally acceptable given the price of this printer. This took just 2 hours to print, and to compare, this same file would take 10 hours using a stock Ender 3 profile. So what's my verdict on the Anycubic Cobra 2? Well, if you've been eyeballing the latest fast printers starting at $600 US dollars in the case of the Creality K1 and $700 for the Bamboo Labs P1P, then this might be a good way to enter that space on a budget. I found the leveling system on this machine to be pretty easy to use as well, so I'm sure a beginner could get this up and running in no time. I also think this would be a prime candidate for a clipper install, taking advantage of some of the vibration compensation features. Special thanks to Annie Kubik for providing this machine in exchange for an honest review, and to you for watching. If you like 3D printing content, consider subscribing. As always, happy printing.